Next important topic we are going to study is electron transport chain. That happens in which organelle? Mitochondria. So after Krebs cycle, what will be formed? NADH and FADH. So we have to convert into what ATP, our energy form. So for that, we'll do what? Electron transport chain. So some brief thing about electron transport chain. ETC, electron transport chain. So they occur in which organelle? They occur in mitochondria. They occur in mitochondria. What is the function? They convert. What is the function? Convert NADH and FADH to to ATP. So we will see how it is taking place. Briefly, we will see how it is. Taking this, you know, mitochondria is a double membrane organ, right? Everyone knows mitochondria is a double membrane organ. So this is called outer membrane, and this is called inner membrane. Outer membrane and inner membrane. This is called inner membrane space. This is called inner membrane space. This is our cytoplasm. This is our cytoplasm. So listen carefully. We have this inner area of the uh, mitochondria is called matrix. They are called matrix. Now we have five complexes taking place. One, two, three. Four and five. Five complexes taking place in what electron transport chain. See, already this is how it happens. Our NADH and FADH2 is here. They are coming from the Krebs cycle. Now they will release electron. They will release what? Electron. This electron will pump four H plus out. How many? Four H plus. So remember a formula four zero four two. So the electrons they will pump four H plus out in second complex. Electrons will move into second complex, they will form 0 H plus. Third complex they will move and form 4 complex, 4 H plus again. Then fourth complex they form 2. So remember 4, 0, 4, 2. First one 4 H plus out. Second one 0 H plus out. Third one 4 H plus out. Fourth complex 2 H plus out. Okay. Fifth one is ATP synthase complex. So the electron reach in the fourth complex. After that it will come out and who will receive that? Our oxygen will receive the electron. So they will combine with the 4H, sorry, 2H plus and they form water. So what is, so this is how the electrons are carried by the oxygen. The last H plus electron is oxygen. Okay, so that is a function of oxygen. So they will form water. So there is no uh, problem, right? Water is useful for us. Now we will see what are these each complex. So what happens like actually, NADH and FADH form electrons. The electron goes in from H plus outside, 4, 0, 4, 2. So this is happening. Now in the inner membrane, see we will have lot of H plus, right? The high H plus. So here we have low H plus. So high H plus, they start coming through the fifth complex. That is the ATP synthase pump. We have F0, F1 particle there. They will be like a fan. And they will pump out what ATP. Fifth complex, they pump out ATP. ATP synthase pump. This is how ATP is formed. This is called our electron transport chain. Now we have to study each complex. See, the first complex, we call it as NADH first complex NADH ubiquinone oxido reductins NADH ubiquinone oxido first complex NADH ubiquinone oxido reductins now this they pump how many H plus sound? 4 H plus sound remember they pump 4 H plus out. First one will form 4 H plus. So first one 4 H plus out. Now the second complex. See second complex is called succinate. See the other name of first complex is NADH dehydrogenase. That is the other name of first complex. So the other enzyme NADH dehydrogenase. Okay. Now let's study about second complex. So second complex is called Succinate quinone oxido 
reductase succinone quinone oxido reductase is also called succinate dehydrogenase 2 succinate dehydrogenase they pump how many h plus out zero they pump zero remember it now now the third one is called cytochrome bc1 complex third one is called cytochrome bc1 complex they pump how many they pump 3 h plus out 3 h plus how this is some other name that is called cytochrome oxidase 2 cytochrome oxidase so three complex are over right now the fourth complex i am writing here the fourth complex is called cytochrome c oxidase cytochrome c oxidase the one function is they will combine three and four they will help to keep three and four together and they will pump two h plus out cytochrome c oxidase they will make three and four complex together now the fifth complex is called atp synthase complex so they, they are the fan for making what ATP they contain two unit F0 and F1 particle so these are the five complex and this is how the ETC works understood so first one second one third one fourth one and fifth one clear so this is how ATP work now in MCQ they will ask many things like who will inhibit these complexes the inhibitors so that's how it is the inhibitors of these complexes so inhibitors very important so complex 1 is inhibited by complex 1 you know complex 1 now and it is become under ticks it is inhibited by a compound called rotinone or rotinate rotinone r o t n o n e huh? second is inhibited by the compound called melonate melonate third one is inhibited by substance called bath okay there is a demonist remember in hindi hindi ro means cry huh? ro mat bach beta for bacha it means don't cry big boy pro mat beta or bacha so one two three and fourth one it is inhibited by fourth complex our cyanide hydrogen sulfide carbon monoxide first is also inhibited by phenobarbital phenobarbital okay second is also important by carboxyl there is a common called carboxyl so rotinone is an insecticide okay carboxyl now third one is also inhibited by antimycin antimycin now our fifth form is our ATP pump they are inhibited by common called oligomycin oligomycin they mainly inhibit the F0 particle F0 oligomycin so these are the main inhibitors these are the main inhibitors now we will study some uncoupling what is mean by uncoupling so you remember the old H plus radian, they comes when they are high, they come through the fifth complex, right? If they leak out through some other complex or through other surfaces, we call it as uncoupling. When H plus leak out through other than fifth complex, we call it as uncoupling. Okay, understood? So physiological uncouplers. No, normally in our body there are some uncouplers. So when the H plus come out, not the H plus come out through the ATP in this chromosome, we will get ATP. If it comes through other compounds, it is formed as a heat. No, in our body heat. So physiological uncouplers, they are first one our thyroxine or hormone, thyroxine. Then our fatty tissue, huh? brown fat, adipose tissue, brown fat. This is a good example of physiological uncoupers. Okay, and bilirubin also can play. Now there are some pathological uncoupers. That remember. So some chemical can also cause pathological uncouplers. 
See the pathological uncouplers include first one 2 4 dinitrophenol. First one is 2 4 dinitrophenol. Second one high dose aspirin. High dose aspirin. And we have some other substance known as phenylhydrazone. Phenyl hydrazone. Then the last substance is trifluorocarbamyl cyanide. Trifluorocarbamyl cyanide. So uncoupling that is if you lose the H plus other than through fifth complex. So it will be appeared as heat. So we have thyroxine and brown fat as physiological uncouplers. Pathological include 2,4-dinitrophenol, high dose aspirin, phenylhydrazine, trifluorocarbamyl cyanide. So these are the physiopathological uncouplers. So these are all about it is important things about electron transport chain. Remember it, it's very important for exam. Clear?